Decon, don't pick up your bob or leave it on the floor. We'll pick it up later, okay? That floor is farther away from your head than what you think. All right? <laughs> okay. All right. Every dad stand up, please. Everybody give them a hand. <clears throat> Gentlemen, you're doing a good job, okay? Uh, John Crew calls me his red-headed stepson. He's not, I'm not, but he calls me that because I'm stubborn, right? I'm going to ask you to simply turn your Bibles open to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25. I want to use one verse. Uh, next week, the Lord willing and the creek don't rise, I hope to get back into the book of Revelation. Uh, I've had a good time preaching um, uh, and today, I, I hope I can give you just some good barnyard philosophy is what I call it, uh, just some good uh, information about being a Christian husband and a Christian father. I'd like for you to stand as I read this one verse, and then we'll go from there. I hope that there you find in your outline lots of information uh, from Scripture that you can use as well as I hope to be able to help you with. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25, we read this. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. I'll let you be seated. Please keep your Bibles ready and open and um, uh, usable as we take a look at some things. I would say this to begin with, that... I believe that many of us, have, as we have been Christians for a number of years, as we have our Bibles, as we've been in church, that um, we have been able to put together uh, our following Jesus Christ. I, I hope we all have been able to put that together. Uh, I believe that we're all on a journey. Uh, there is a button that uh, a, a certain Christian organization uh, published, and it was all the the letters of this, I can't remember all the different letters, but it really meant, please be patient with me, I'm, God's not finished with me yet. Please be patient with me, God's not finished with me yet. And I believe that all of us are continuing to grow, and we're on that journey to be the Christian that Jesus wants us to be. Amen? Amen. I believe as well that it's a journey for every man to be what God wants him to be. Uh, I think it's a journey for every husband to be the husband God wants him to be, and I think it's a journey for every dad to be the kind of dad that God wants him to be, right? And so we're all on this journey. 
I think a challenge, uh, if you don't mind me saying so, but I think the challenge is putting the two together. Uh, how can you always be the best Christian that God wants you to be as well as being the best husband and father that God wants you to be? Now, maybe to you that doesn't seem to be a challenge, but you know when your little girl comes in at 2 o'clock in the morning and you told her to be home at 11, all of a sudden what you say has to be meted out and measured out very carefully. Gentlemen, amen on that one? Okay, all right. Tim didn't say amen because his girls, all right, never mind. Uh, we won't go there, right? Okay, uh, all right. Now watch this. So what our challenge is is to put all of this together. One of the things that got me thinking about this, and uh, I made this comment to one of our members, and uh, I, I will kind of pick up there, but sometimes uh, in a kidding fashion, uh, just kind of ribbing um, the uh, husband-to-be, the groom, as I marry couples, as we get ready to walk down the aisle, and he follows me along with the gang of um, folks behind him that could chase him down if he starts to run, right? Aren't those called the groomsmen? Uh, did you all know that that's what they're for? They're supposed to chase down the groom if he takes off, right? All right? But as uh, the groom and I begin to walk down the aisle, uh, you could possibly on occasion hear me rib that groom by saying, dead man walking. Now, I do that just kidding. But gentlemen, I want you to face the truth. And that is that every husband and every dad needs to be a dead man walking. And here's my reasons. As we take a look at this subject, and as Paul wrote this to every Christian, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. That you and I need to be dead men walking. I think we need to be just as kind of dads instead of just a dad. We need to be just as Christ to our wife as Jesus is to our church. But there's a lot to be said about this. Paul would also write in the New Testament in his epistles, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And every dad and every husband and every man on this globe needs to comprehend what it means to be crucified with Christ and allow Jesus to live in and through us. Amen? In Galatians chapter 5, we read this. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. In Philippians chapter 2, Paul wrote this. We need to be conformed to his death. In chapter 2, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And then Jesus, uh, as he is described, left the realms of glory and all of his, um, his glory there. And he became flesh, just like we are. In Acts chapter 11, you and I know that Christians were first called Christians in the city of Antioch. And we throw that word around, that title around, but what really did they mean when they began to call Christians Christians? Prior to that, Christians were called the followers of the Jesus of Nazareth or um, uh, followers of the way. Uh, by the way, some guys, um, I've told you this before, but you know that Kraft Cheese is opening up a new factory in Israel. Did you know that? They're going to call it Cheeses of Nazareth. Luke, you didn't like that one at all. Okay, anyway, let's go on. Okay. But before then, before this passage in Acts chapter 11, followers of Jesus were called the followers of that Nazarene or followers of that way. So what did they mean in Antioch when they first called us Christians? Well, actually, it was tongue-in-cheek. It was meant to be um, a slam against us. Oh, oh you're little Jesuses. Well, in essence, boys and girls, that's what we're supposed to be. With Christ in us, we're to be little Jesuses. And again, please understand what I'm trying to say. 
Our goal then is to marry the idea of being a Christian and being a man and a husband and a father in this world of ours today. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to give you some general advice. I call it barnyard philosophy, but it comes from the scripture. If I'm speaking to any young man or any young woman today, may I say this. In order for a marriage to work out well, you have to start on the right foot. I think there's an oriental saying that um, a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step, right? Uh, There's something about it like that. If you take your first step that way when you intend to go that way, a thousand steps will not get you that way, right? You have to start the journey well. And my Bible says this, be ye unequally yoked. Do not be unequally yoked. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. So if you are single, please make sure that you're following God's will for your life and you find someone that God has put together just for you. Um, There are not a lot of fish in the ocean. As much as the world's philosophy will tell you that. There is one person for you to be with, and God has created them. Just be patient, because that person is out there. Be ye not unequally yoked. A mom during World War II, and I called her this morning and wished her a happy Father's Day, because mom filled the shoes of my father when he was no longer in the picture, and she worked very hard, and she's worked hard her whole life. During World War II, when all the boys in the family were fighting, she helped my grandpa farm, but they could not afford a tractor, tires, gas, and oil, so they farmed with mules. My grandma and grandpa would have been great Amish people. My, my mom taught me this. When you're married, you have to G and haul with your spouse. Oh, some of you got a puzzled look on your face. But some of you know what that means. Because I understand that when you drive mules, G and haul is left and right or right and left. Um, Bill Logan can tell me which one is which, but I've never driven mules before. She also told me if an animal bites you, bite it back on the ear and it'll never do it again. All right? By the way, she bit me on the ear a couple of times when she was raising me. All right? Now... Boys and girls, if you are not married yet, God has the perfect spouse ready for you. Take your time and keep yourself unto that day. Do I have any amens on that? All right. When you are married, you have to learn how to G and haul with each other. And that's the first step. Sometimes we say it this way, it takes two to tango. We have to pull in the same direction. Sometimes we think that opposites attract and well enough, and yet mentally and spiritually, you have to be on the same wavelength with each other. The story of Adam and Eve has some real significance to it, and many times when I marry a couple, I share that passage of Scripture when I marry them. Something that I typically say is this, the bone out of Adam's body did not come from his head, even though, ladies, you know that we're boneheads. Ladies, amen. All right, there's, okay. But it did not come from his head to make that which was created from the bone feel that she should be superior to him, above him. Didn't happen. Uh, The bone did not come from Adam's foot, even though a third of our bones are found in our feet. Did you all know that? There's lots of bones there, but the bone did not come from his foot so that whatever was created from that bone would ever feel that she needs to be inferior to him. Where did the bone come from? Remind me. The side, the rib, right? So that together they would rule the kingdom side by side. Sin entered the world because one of them made a decision all on her own, but I won't tell you her name, but let's leave that one alone. But when they decided, watch, to do this instead of this, 